The alanine has been labelled as the best performance and muscle building supplement to hit the market in years and it's often referred to as the next creatine or creatine 2.0. But really, how good is this supplement and what does the science and the real world results have to say about it? Well in this video we go over what beta alanine is, how it works and what place it might have in your overall program. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. To understand how beta alanine works, we first must understand the three main energy systems of the body, namely the ATP phosphocreatine system, which is for short bursts of very intense efforts lasting 10 seconds or less, the glycolytic system, which is for high intensity efforts lasting up to a few minutes, and the oxidative system, which is for lower intensity efforts that can last up to multiple hours. All three energy systems work simultaneously to a degree, but certain ones will become more predominant depending on the intensity of the activity and the duration. Most of our attention will be focused on the glycolytic system for this video, as this is the one that's most relevant to beta alanine. To better explain the glycolytic system, let's use an analogy and say that you're in the gym trying to build muscle. Initially, the stored energy in your muscles, which is glycogen, is converted into glucose in a process called glycolysis. And this glucose is then broken down to create ATP, which is a molecule that enables your muscles to contract. And this process also results in hydrogen ions as well as a substance called pyruvate being produced. The hydrogen ions are released into your muscle cells, resulting in your muscles becoming increasingly acidic because these ions reduce the pH levels in your muscles. The pyruvate you produce binds with some of these hydrogen ions and converts them into a substance called lactate. And the lactate acts as a temporary buffering system to reduce the buildup of acid in your muscle cells. With no oxygen present to remove the hydrogen ions and the lactate, as the intense exercise continues, the muscles become increasingly more acidic as more hydrogen ions are created. And if your muscle cells become too acidic, the acidity will block glucose breakdown and reduce your muscles' ability to contract, causing fatigue. And this is where beta alanine can help. Beta alanine is an amino acid that alongside another amino acid called histidine make up the substrates that form the peptide carnosine. And carnosine is important because during exercise it acts as a hydrogen ion buffer in your muscles. During higher intensity training, as your reps build up, there is a buildup of hydrogen ions and this is the burning sensation that you feel at higher rep ranges. Because hydrogen ions cause increasing acidity in your muscles, if more of these ions become mitigated by carnosine, then the buildup of acidity in your muscles is delayed and you can squeeze out a few more repetitions of your given exercise. So at this point you might be asking, well if carnosine buffers the acidic effect of exercise, then why not take carnosine to increase carnosine levels? Well, it's been well proven that taking beta alanine increases carnosine levels more than taking carnosine itself. This is because within your muscles, histine levels are normally high and beta alanine levels are normally low, which limits the production of carnosine. Taking carnosine that is equal parts beta alanine to histidine will not supply the relative amount of beta alanine required to elevate it to the level of histidine and therefore maximizing carnosine levels in your muscles. Supplementing with just beta alanine instead can elevate your carnosine levels in your muscles by up to 80%. There haven't been any studies showing that beta alanine is effective at increasing the amount of load that can be lifted. However, as you can see, what beta alanine is good at doing is increasing the amount of reps or volume that can be performed at higher rep ranges of around 12 to 20 reps. And this additional volume adds up to better performance and increased muscle growth potential over time. But remember too that beta alanine's application doesn't stop with strength training. If you're involved in sports like rowing, track cycling, or other activities that involve the glycolytic energy system, you'd benefit from taking beta alanine in order to push yourself at higher intensities for longer. Beta alanine won't work with very short duration, very intense activities like 100 meter sprints or strength training performed at lower rep sets of say eight reps or less. These demands are for the ATP phosphocreatine system, which is utilized at the very high end of intensity. And this is where the supplement creatine has more merit because it helps you facilitate faster regeneration of ATP and enables you to perform that extra rep or two or lift slightly more load during your workouts. So if you're doing more absolute strength, speed or power based training like power lifting or Olympic lifting, you won't see much benefit from taking beta alanine. However, if you're doing more metabolic type training like CrossFit or traditional bodybuilding, you will see a lot more benefit from taking it. Hence the argument of whether beta alanine is better than creatine is a bit misdirected because they both serve to enhance different energy systems and mechanisms of the body that are based on the type of activity you're doing. Now, if you're looking to take beta alanine, you're probably wondering how to take it and what sort of dosages and loading is required. The following is based on the latest research, but this is not health advice, so please consult your doctor first before taking this on board. When you take beta alanine or a pre-workout supplement containing this amino acid, you're likely to get an itching or tingling sensation around parts of your body. And this is nothing to be alarmed about, and it's the only known side effect of beta alanine supplementation. This form of paresthesia is just a stimulatory effect, 
And since beta alanine is a hybrid between two powerful neurotransmitters called GABA and glycine, uh, plenty of scientists are also classifying beta alanine as a secondary neurotransmitter, giving it additional stimulatory effects. However, these stimulatory effects are often mistaken and even sold as beta alanine taking effect straight away on your performance. In truth, it takes a few weeks for beta alanine to take effect on your muscle carnosine levels, with full saturation taking up to 10 weeks in some cases. And this build-up process can be longer or shorter depending on the size and the frequency of your doses. Most studies point to 4-6 to six grams per day as the required amount of beta alanine to ingest, and this is more effective if you spread this amount out into smaller doses throughout the day. For instance, taking 2 grams at morning, midday and evening time is more effective than taking 3 grams in the morning and evening, and even more effective than trying to take 6 grams all at once. Another advantage of taking smaller, more frequent doses is the reduced tingling sensation you experience at these lower levels, which can be annoying to a lot of people. And what happens if you build up your muscle carnosine levels and then you stop taking beta alanine? Well fortunately muscle carnosine is quite stable and the washout rate is around 2-4% per week. Some people respond better to beta alanine than others and experience more heightened increases in carnosine levels along with washout rates towards the lower end of the spectrum, while others who don't respond quite as well and usually experience washout rates towards the higher end of the spectrum. Overall though, the benefits of beta alanine are still great even if you are a low level responder. And what about getting the required amount of beta alanine dosages from your diet instead of a supplement? Well, you'd have to eat well over one kilogram of most meats consistently each day to get the required daily dose of beta alanine, hence making the supplement form a lot easier to ingest. As you've probably guessed by now, arguing that beta alanine is better than creatine is a bit misdirected. Creatine allows for faster regeneration of ATP and enabling us to perform that extra rep or two or lift slightly more weight during our workouts, whereas beta alanine comes into play when your glycolytic system is predominantly at work and allows you to crank out more reps at higher rep ranges and thus build more muscle through increased volume over time. Even though this supplement is often advertised as an absolute strength builder, beta alanine has only been proven to increase the amount of reps you can perform at higher rep ranges and not the amount of load that can be lifted. The tingles and other stimulation effects are not a sign of beta alanine activating to give you more reps as some would suggest or have you believe, but instead you need to take this supplement for several weeks in larger doses in order to see its effects. And these higher doses are a lot more than most pre-workout powders provide. With everything said though about getting your dosage and your loading right, you still have to train hard and push yourself for beta alanine to work. Just like with creatine, beta alanine won't have much use to you if you're not applying progressive overload or you're not pushing yourself to perform better on a consistent basis. Let me know what your thoughts on beta alanine are though by leaving a comment below about what your experience are like with it. Tap the like button and follow us if you got a lot out of this video and make sure you read the description too so you can grab some of our free bonus material including training programs, nutrition plans and other great resources. Thanks and see you next time.